All right, some good news, some bad news. <clears throat> the bad news is that the website, <clears throat> which was very well done, um, had many rabbit holes of its own. And if you can, uh, if you're good with finding websites that have been removed from the search, uh, look up the name Joe Esperes, J O E space E S P E R E Z. Joe Esperes. On November 3rd, 2018, I was offered a job at Amazon uh, Human Resources Department. And Joe Esperes had a really amazing website, which if you copied and pasted portions of it, you would see some really amazing information. It was all very coded, very... AI style way of doing things that was on uh, November 3rd and the phone number used was 1410100001 November 4th 2018 um, I talked with Aaron downstairs and I told him uh, on our walk that the only thing that mattered to me about Facebook was my writing and my pictures because I was well after talking with him my Facebook was closed for 30 days. I got a message from 1410-100-002, which had the ability to close my Facebook and is one digit off from the number of Joe Esperes. So who is this, DARPA? Who's behind this DARPA, NSA, NASA, MI5, military intelligence, everybody, right? So 1410-100-001 on November 3rd gives me the job. I accept it the next day. One four one zero one hundred zero zero two is the phone number, which links to another phone number of eight five three four one five eight one zero six nine. So that closed my Facebook or blocked me from doing anything on it for thirty days. So I went and knocked on Aaron's door downstairs, and I said, what, uh, what's up? Uh, did you do this? And he didn't answer all my questions. There was something else, but he said, well, you said you just cared about your writing and your pictures. Basically saying... Oh, the day before, it was another day, maybe the day before, or another day, we had lost our Wi-Fi. Yeah, it was, the, it was the third. No, it was the fourth. Um, when they came over, Alyssa and Nolan and Aaron, and they were over. And then 
Alyssa and Nolan left, and Don was all happy. How'd you think that went? I think it went good. But while they were here, Nolan was talk said, what do you th where do you think you would get a job to be a crisis actor? And I said, well, probably, you know, NSA. And uh, he was arguing for that. And I was like, eh, you know, those false flags are used to deprive people of their rights, uh, basically. So I'm against them. He's like, well, nobody gets hurt that way. And I'm like, yeah, but what's the point of doing them? You know? So, and then he said, uh, you know, on the topic of acting, he was like, I could play you, you know, like grow a beard and, you know, I could, you know, act like you. It was kind of weird. That was a little creepy. The guy straight up at my house and invited valued guest of Don and he's saying how he could act like be a crisis actor acting like he could imitate me like play me in a movie if he grew a beard it was uh, a bit strange yeah no you don't think so I think so I think it's strange and uh, I'll have to check his last name. So the training began on 11, 8, November 8th of 2018, just with a Zelle account. I had to make a Zelle account, get a Zelle account. And uh, that went on small dollar amounts for a couple weeks until on the 24th, by the 24th, I mean, I had a business. They made a business in the state of New Hampshire, Georgia's General Freight Base LLC, or Incorporated. Georgia's General Freight Base. So, hey, someone makes me a business and I have a business? Great. Um, so... On November 24th, I have the appointment with someone named Heather Rowland at the bank nearby in town. Um, I might have to double check what bank that was. So, that's the, that's all the factual information I have, but I will say that when Aaron and Julie Uhas moved out. Their phone numbers were removed from my um, everything. Like we had texts between us and they deleted them. Well, Aaron did because he's an IT guy. So hacking into my stuff and monitoring it. Plus I have Alexa over here, you know, I love enough. But this is the beginning of me unraveling what they actually did with my life. And I'm gonna throw this out there often because Actually, I'll make a... No, I'll add it here. The character is Zachary Solomon and the Lost Symbol. The Lost Symbol was based on me, and I can prove that in another video. But they're making the point. The When I had to go to court for Dan Brown and UFOs and uh, a Facebook post about uh, the purge.
the officer, total scumbag, said to the judge, and he thinks he's a character in one of Dan Brown's books. And I said, no, the character is based on me. And Dan himself said in a 1998 interview with writersright.com that he bases his characters on real people and it's something that he's been criticized for. So the problem comes in that they say that, the police say this, and then in May of 2019, I'm arrested without grounds and put in jail for 24 hours, but they, I mean, it was illegal for them to take me at all, but they kept me there two days, going through withdrawals, no medical care. I mean, my regular medicine causes withdrawals if I don't have it. I had no medicine at all, none, and was assaulted. I had my nose broken. And the uh, guy who shared a cell with me, his name was Zachary Spinelli, Zachary S. So the guy in the book, Zachary S. The guy I'm sharing a cell with, Zachary S. Both of these people have shaved, you know, the body shaved and the body's covered in tattoos. Think about the chances of that being a coincidence. Zachary S. Yes, the last name was different. It wasn't Solomon in real life. It was Spinelli. But the name Zachary S, the fact that they were shaved bald, bald heads, shaved bald, and body covered in tattoos, the chances of that being a coincidence are, it's impossible. Essentially impossible. And I asked him how long he had been there because I was suspicious. And he said, two weeks. And he'd been there, he'd been in there, you know, in jail for a few years. So two weeks before I moved there, he's moved there and they make sure that I'm in his room. And when I got to the jail, the first thing the guy said was, I want to make all your wildest dreams come true. Before he gave me my friggin' ID. And uh, whatever they gave me for medical uh, made me shit green like slime. So after being assaulted, having withdrawals, and shitting myself green because I'd had diarrhea for a day and a half. Uh, they said, there's somebody waiting for you, or um, do you want us to give you a ride? But he said, there, there's somebody waiting for you. So stupidly, I believed that there was someone waiting. I walked out of the jail with a broken nose, and there was nobody there. Was able to hitch a ride. Um, left my shitty underwear at the uh, on the floor in the bathroom at the jail. And there was a piece of paper in my hand that said, John thinks he lives in a house owned by Donald Trump. And that's uh, what happened. And it was covered in blood. And at the jail, they took it and they put it in a a uh, plastic bag, probably to dispose of the evidence. And uh, this 
I want factually collaborated and I need help. I have proof of the phone, but the um, being put in jail, illegally held there for two days, being put in a cell with a guy of the same name, with the same exact description, the chances of that, you can run the chances of that being a coincidence and let me know if it's any less than one in a billion. Because it's one, it's not. The odds of that being a coincidence are zero. So that was planned by somebody and, re and involved me getting my nose broken, being deprived of medical care to the point that I could have, I could have died.